Hello and welcome. This is the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is Topaz Studio 2, Creative Toolbox, episode number 31. Before I start today, let me give you a bit of a background on this image, okay? This er image originally looked like this. It's just a stock image, and I like the light coming through it, but I thought, I want to start playing around with it and see what I can come up with. And I spent about an hour to almost two hours playing with it. And I ended up with this and I thought, this looks really cool. It kind of looks like an image from the Lord of the Rings. And I'll show you all the different layers involved to get it to this point. Now, this is not about how I got it from here to here, but it's how I get it from here into a piece of art, which is eventually going to look like this right here. But I'm going to show you every step of the way how I get there. So without any further ado, let's get started. I need to stamp this layer and I'm gonna use this action right here. I could have did shift option command control E to get that. I'm gonna name it Topaz Studio 2 because next I'm gonna send it into Topaz Studio 2. Coming up to filter and launching Topaz Studio 2 and we will get started. We're going into the creative toolbox. I'm gonna to add a filter, come down and come to the impression filter. Before I pick a paintbrush, I'm going to come down to texture and change my background type from solid to original. Gets rid of those white lines. And now I'm going to come back and go through the different brushes and see if I can find a brush that's going to work with this image here. So I'm just going to click through, I think, all of these brushes here. And when I get one that I like, I'm going to stop and use that one. Now, type 10 looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm right now between 10 and type 13 and let's try the other ones as well. Yeah, that type 13 really looks good to me. Let's try these other guys. These are more like a Surratt type uh, look with the dots. I think I'm going to settle on type 13. Now I need to go with the number of strokes, low, medium, or high. High would give you a more defined image, medium, kind of medium definition. I think I'm going to settle for medium. Now I'm working with my brush size just to find that right brush size. So I'm just playing around in here just so I think it looks good. And I like to move the paint opacity up because that gives it makes the paint look like a stronger, thicker type paint when I move it to the right. And I generally do that. Now I'm playing with the stroke rotation just to, to add a little bit of character to the image here. And I think I'm happy right around this point here. And now let's try the stroke color variation. See how it adds some color into the strokes. I don't want too much, but I want to add just a slight amount of color variation into those strokes. And yeah, not too much. I think that looks good. Now I'm going to play with the width of the strokes. So you got width and you got length of the strokes. So I'm just trying to find a width that looks right for me. And the only way you know what's right for you is by playing with these sliders. And once you find a spot that you like, stop. Now I'll go with the length next here. And I'll find the right stroke length for the uh, vision I'm having for this painting today. And now I'm going to play with the spill. Does that help? See how the paint spills out over the edges and things? Do I want that? Sometimes I do, but I think I'm just going to go back to the default setting by double-clicking spill. And now let me pull the smudge slider. This can give you some really cool effects, but for this image, I don't think I want the smudge. And now I'm going to play with the uh, coverage here. Now when I pull it back, you'll notice uh, what it's doing here. It's not doing a whole lot, but let me go ahead and shut the background off back to a solid background. And now you can see why I put it to a solid background. You can see all that white showing through there. I'm going to go back to original and let's go back up. I'm not going to play with the coverage. It's not really doing anything for me here because my paint strokes are too small. And now the painting progress is cool because it lets you go through the different uh, painting process of the image here. You know, like you started out blocking the image in and then you're painting more and more and more. So it lets you go through like a time lapse of the painting process. And a lot of times I like to zoom in just to see what it's doing. And now that I'm zoomed in, let me think about adding a texture. So I'm just playing through some of the different textures here, you know, like brick walls and canvas. I generally use the canvas if I'm doing a painting and I'm gonna settle on a canvas here. And I'm gonna play with the strength a little bit and the texture size. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's shut the impression layer off. There's a before and the after, so looking good. I'm going to play with the opacity to see if I want to ease off on that impression uh, 
filter a little bit and I think I do just a little bit I'm going to add another filter one of my favorites with paintings is precision contrast I'm going to work with the micro contrast small areas of contrast I'm going to work with low areas of contrast and try to just get this just right medium and the high here now the high makes a lot of effect here right so I got to be careful on it and I think I'm going to pull my high back a little bit because I'm losing a little bit of detail in the bottom part of the image. It's blocking up a little bit. So by pulling that high back a little bit, I bring a little more of that detail in and I'm going to work in Photoshop to bring some of that detail back. But there's the before and after the precision contrast and I think I'm happy with it. So far so good. Now here's the overall before and after. I'm happy, so I'll click accept and that sends us back into Photoshop. Now here's the before and here's the after. I'm gonna to run Tony's live clipping action and it adds a layer called live clipping. See the clipping in red? And next I'll click the layer on under the live clipping and I'm gonna to use Tony's action here to add a levels adjustment right under the live clipping layer. And then I'm gonna ease back on the highlights till that red clipping goes away. And as soon as it goes away, I know I've got rid of all my highlight clipping. So I'm just going to back it off. And you can see there it is back again. So I'll just move it till it goes away. If I would have had shadow clipping, it would have showed up as blue. So you'll see blue when you have uh, shadow clipping. Now I'm going to click the live clipping again. And that live clipping layer goes away. I'm just left with my levels. Here's the before and here's the after. So that problem is taken care of. Next, I want to take care of my blocked up shadows at the bottom of the screen. I'm just going to use my uh, Tony Kuiper action to pull all my layers together. I'm going to send this into Adobe Camera Raw. I could use that ACR action or I could come up to filter and use a uh, Camera Raw filter and that'll do the same thing. Take us into Adobe Camera Raw. Now, I'm going to work with these shadows. I like the slider in here. I'm going to pull up in the shadows pretty aggressively here and also my blacks. I'm going to open up my blacks a little bit and then I'm going to send this back into Photoshop and I already, I'm going to use some luminosity mask to really make this adjustment work out just perfectly at the bottom of the image. Okay, so I'm going to click OK and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. I'll shut the layer off that just came back in and I'll use this icon to create a zone mask and I'm going to pick this dark area down here, click OK, and I think that's going to target all the areas I want to fix. Okay, so next what I'll do is apply this as a layer mask onto that layer. Now we don't see any change till I turn that layer on and now you can see the before and after and you can see how nicely that is taking care of that problem very simply. And now I'll work with the opacity just to, you know, dial that adjustment in just right. And yeah, I think that looks really good there at 89% opacity. And now I think I have an issue right in here. I think it's a little too light. So I'm going to use another uh, zone luminosity mask. Click in the light area here. Click OK on my color picker. And yeah, I think that's going to target that zone. So what I'm going to do next is get a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to multiply. You know, that's what multiply looks like. I'll show you what screen looks like here. Of course, screen would be the opposite of what I want. See how light it gets. But I want multiply. So I'm going to choose multiply. Now, it's encroaching other parts of the image that I don't want it to encroach. Uh, like on the right side of the image right here. See that right there? I don't want it. So what I'm going to do is put that in a black group. I'm going to use this Tony Kuiper action, puts it in a black hide all group. I'm going to get a white brush, make myself a pretty big brush. Now I'm using 100% opacity with a 10% flow. I'm using white paint. Again, 10% flow. I'm just going to tap it with my mouse once and watch the layer mask on the right. I'm going to keep tapping it till it looks just right. I'm like click, click, click. And you can see the spot on the group two getting lighter and lighter. And now here's the before and here's the after. Now I'm going to move over to the to the right side of the image and give it maybe one or two clicks right here. And now let's look at the before and after. Yeah, and I think that cleans that up rather nicely. Now I'm noticing another another issue. See these light areas up here. I want to tone these down with some with some color paint. I'm going to collapse this group here because I want the layer to go above it. I'm going to come down to my adjustment layers and get a uh, solid color. Uh, adjustment here. Now everything goes white. I'm going to click OK just to get rid of that. I'm going to shut this layer off and then I'm going to double click on the adjustment layer and so I can sample color. I'm going to pick a color up in here 
And the only reason I shut that layer off so I could see the color I wanted to get to, click OK. That layer is off, right? So I'm going to turn the layer back on. Now I have this orange color of the entire image. I want to change the blend mode to soft light. And now I want to invert this layer mask so I hide the adjustment. Okay, I'm going to use this Tony Kuiper action right here to invert it. Or you could do Command or Control I just as well. I'm going to get a paintbrush, a white paintbrush. I'm going to paint with 100% uh, opacity, 10% flow. And I'm just going to paint that color right over these light areas in here. And I'm going to find every area that I think is a problem and kind of put some paint over it, which is going to alleviate those problems in the light areas. Now just, you know, take your time and find all the areas you need to paint over. And again, we're just painting uh, with a solid color on a layer mask with white paint, a very low flow. And I'm just letting that solid color show through the mask wherever I paint. This is a very effective and easy way of solving this type of a problem. So I'm just continuing to find all the places and just, you know, working around with that very low flow. Now here's my before and here's my after. As you can see, that's really taking care of that problem. Next, I wanna lighten up this area at the bottom and this beam right here. I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer to do that. I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen just to lighten everything. Now I need to invert the layer mask to hide it and I'm gonna to use Tony's action here to invert or I could use Command or Control I. I'm gonna get a paintbrush. I'm still painting with 100% opacity, a very low flow of 10% and I'm just going to paint that light in. In other words, that screen adjustment is going to show through there and it adds that little bit of light and a little bit on this beam here. And then to tailor it in, uh, I'm going to go to a black paint and just brush out the edges a little bit and make sure that looks just right. So here's before and after. And if that's too strong, I'll take the opacity off and then just build it up slowly and stop when I think it looks just perfect. Before and after, that looks good. I'm happy. Next, I'd like to do a bit of dodging. I'm just going to use this action right here. I'm going to click right here, and that's going to give me a blank pixel layer in the overlay blend mode. I'm using white paint. Again, 100% opacity, 10% flow. I'm going to pick out little spots and start to dodge, and I'm just going to add some drama and life into this image. Now, this is where you really, again, start crafting your images. You know, I'm not using any luminosity mass. I'm just simply painting over areas that I think need to light up and I'm adding that excitement into the image. So I'm just looking for light spots and I'm gonna paint those with that very low opacity and 100% flow. And you'll see them start to light up here. And I think this is where you can really make or break an image. If you overdo it, you can break an image, but if you do it just right, you can really make your image a lot more exciting and a lot more enjoyable to look at. And when you see the before and after, you're gonna see a big difference here. So I'm just looking for all the areas I think. I'm gonna come up in these trees now and kiss a little bit of light here and there. I'm not gonna go crazy, but just little spots on the trees, on the edges. I'm looking for light areas, not dark areas. And I'm just gonna kiss some light on the light areas. And just, like I said, enjoy yourself and take your time and hit the areas you think. You can always undo if you get a spot that you don't want. And I'm going to paint on some of these leaves here, light those up a little bit. I'm going to come up into some of these leaves up in here. And again, I'm just working around looking for those light areas of areas of interest. And this is, again, all part of the joy of editing when you really start to sculpt your image by adding these little highlights. I get excited. I, it really makes me happy when I do this kind of stuff. And it's, again, that's why I call my channel the joy of editing, because I love to edit. And this is where, you know, it's all done here, you know. But let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. But see the drama come out. Now I can take the opacity again, pull it off, and then just build it up slowly. And when you get a spot where you think it looks really natural, stop. And I'm happy. Well, we just did dodging. Now let's do some burning. I'm going to go and get this action here. Click it. It's just a blank pixel layer in the soft light blend mode with black paint. It sets me up for black paint. Again, 100% opacity, 10% flow. I'm just going to paint some burning. I'm going to burn some areas, darken up some areas. Even some of those trees that look a little too light, I'm going to darken them up. You'll see as I continue to paint through here. But I'm just looking for dark areas now and just adding a little bit of interest to it. Adds a little bit more texture into here. Let me see I'm darkening that tree up a little bit. And some of those distant trees look a little too light to me, so I'm just going to throw a little bit of burning on them. 
and they'll darken them up in certain spots and they'll show through better. But again, this is fun. When you're doing this, you feel like you're an actual painter. You're not using luminosity masks. You're just freehanding everything here. See, I'm just painting those indications of uh, tree trunks in there and uh, just having some fun. And it just adds, again, what can I say? It adds drama. It adds life. It makes your image sing. And when your image sings, it makes you happy. At least it makes me happier. So, so you see that. You just keep coming in here. And you play your darks against your lights. When you have darks against lights, things start to get really exciting. Darks next to lights make those lights really pop out even more. So I'm down here in the foreground here working with this area. And I'm just playing and playing and adding some textures down in here. Just pretending I'm a painter down in here and I'm just having a lot of fun. And I hope you're enjoying this tutorial today. Uh, please leave comments and questions. I'd be happy to hear from you. I always enjoy hearing from you and it's, and it's a lot of fun to, uh, to interact with everyone. So here we go. Now let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. So see that? Some of those trees are showing through a lot better in the background. I'm going to pull the opacity back and then I'm just going to build it up slowly and stop when I like it. And here's the before and after. It looks good. And one more time before and after. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to put these two layers into a group. And uh, I'm going to call this Dodge and Burn. So now we can shut this whole group off and see the before and the after Dodging and Burning. But see what difference Dodging and Burning makes? Well, there it is, everyone. Uh, I like to think of this as the Lord of the Rings forest. You never know. Uh, you might see Frodo or Samwise walking through here, maybe even Gandalf riding on a horse. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing. <laughs>